Hey, what's up everyone? David Cohen here for Learn Now FX and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at our new plugin AccuShader for Fusion Studio. AccuShader is a physical base shading plugin that allows you to create photorealistic materials inside of Fusion. This video is going to be a detailed overview of how to use AccuShader and I will be putting timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead to the parts of the video that you like. We're going to start off by showing how to install AccuShader, the installation process. After that, we're going to be taking a look at how to create this cobblestone material in Fusion with these maps that I got from polyhaven.com. Polyhaven is a very great website that has a lot of different kinds of free textures that you can use, PBR textures, and we're going to be putting them together with AccuShader. After that, we're going to be putting together this metallic material using the PBR metallic workflow with AccuShader. These maps are from Polygon, which is another great place to get PBR textures, very high quality, but those are not free. Most of them are premium. There are a few free ones that are very good quality as well. This one is one of the free ones, and it is a very nice site to get PBR textures. So we will be putting this together as well. After that, we will be creating our own PBR texture using the tools that come with AccuShader. And I say this one for last because it's important that you understand how AccuShader works before we can go to create our own materials. So let's get started with the installation. After you purchase AccuShader, you will receive three files at the download. The first one is the installer, the second one is the pre-install script, and the third one is a readme file. If you're installing AccuShader for the first time, you can just drag and drop the installer script onto the Fusion Grid and proceed with the installation. Click next and wait for the installer to finish. It takes about five minutes because it comes with environment maps, 10 high quality environment maps, also from polyhaven.com. They are public domain and they are very good. You can check out many, many more HDRI maps over there. They come in like 4K. The ones that are included are 1K, so it will be easier to install and they are mostly for preview purposes. But the thing is, if you already installed AccuShader before and you wish to update to a newer version, if you click this next button, you will get this message. An older version of AccuShader is already installed in this program. Please run the AccuShader pre-installation script, restart Fusion and run the script again. What this means is, first you have to run this pre-installation script, then restart Fusion, and then you can run the installation script and after you restart again, then you have the newer version of AccuShader. So that's actually pretty simple and this step wasn't necessary with our previous plugins but any plugin that accesses Fusion's 3D environment has to go through these extra steps. So that's basically it for the installation. It's very simple, it takes a little bit of time, five minutes, so you can get yourself a cup of coffee to wait while this installs and after you restart you have AccuShader at the tip of your fingers. Now let's take a look at how to create this stone material with these maps. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this and we're going to start with the maps from scratch. So here are our maps, cobblestone maps. So albedo is the same as base color, so I'm going to drag that in. And then we have roughness, then the displacement, and finally the normal. So four maps and these four maps together can create a very nice looking material. You don't need a specular map for this one. We have a roughness map. So I'm going to control spacebar, search for IQ shader and send it to the viewer. This is what it looks like right off the bat. It might look similar to a cook torrents or a blin, but it has many different kinds of features that you'll see and you won't see these features in any of the other fusion tools like clear coat, transmission, we have an environment input that allows you to uh, have image based lighting. And we also have displacement built into the shader. So I'm going to pipe these in to the appropriate slot. So right click over the output square of the map and pipe it over the node of AccuShader. And I'm going to connect the albedo to the base color. And this is what it looks like. And then the roughness. So make sure to pipe that into the roughness input. After that, I'm going to plug in the normal into a bump map. Because if your normal map looks like this, that means it's a normal map and not a height map. So we have to change the type to bump map. 
in the bump map node. So now it looks correct. If we were to use height map, it wouldn't work properly. It would look like this with lots of noise, lots of lots of artifacts. So we need it to be a bump map. We don't have any control over the height now, but it was already chosen by whoever created this map. So I'm going to pipe this into the bump map input of AccuShader and view it again. This is what it looks like without the bump and this is what it looks like with the bump. And finally, I'm going to pipe in the displacement map. Now, make sure it goes into the displacement material input. And as you can see, this is a bit too much, like quite a bit too much. We have some warping because the scale is too much. So I'm going to scale this down, the displacement under the displacement settings. I'm going to change the height to 0.02. Now we have just a little bit of displacement and it's kind of hard to see on the sphere. Like if you disconnect this and then connect it back, you can hardly see it. But if this was on an image plane, you'd be able to see it much better. And finally, I want to plug in the environment map. So go to AccuShader on the top here, click Browse Environments, and I want to choose an outdoors one like this one. And this environment is in linear color space. So I'm just going to uh, pipe this into the environment map input of AccuShader. And under the Maps tab, make sure that your environment input is set to linear. And now we have the appropriate image based diffuse lighting and specular reflections based off of this map. So let's see what this looks like in 3D. I'm going to grab a shape 3D. This is the image plane. And I'm going to rotate it minus 90 so that the normals are facing up. And I'm going to pipe this in. And this is what it looks like without lighting. This is just the environment lighting right now. This is the image based lighting from our environment. It looks pretty good. This is what, if you don't want to use any light, that's what it would look like. But if I turn the lights on, you'll see we get an extra specular going on here. So I don't like using the default light. So I'm just going to add a point light, which is my go-to light. And I'm going to merge the two together. And I'm just going to change the position of the point light. So I can move it like that. So now I want to show you what the displacement actually does. So if I zoom in like this, position the camera at a nice angle, you can see that there's a little bit of displacement going on here. And if I disconnect the displacement map, you will see only bump, what only bump looks like. So yeah, bump looks very good when you're not at glancing angles. It looks as if there is some depth, but once you approach a glancing angle, you'll see that the bump is actually flat like that. But with the displacement map, you see that we have depth. So this is actually an illusion. There is no real depth. If you look at the uh, wireframe node, you'll see that the wireframe is exactly the same as it was. So this is a technique called parallax occlusion mapping. So it creates the appearance of depth by casting rays from the camera onto the surface and it goes inside the surface until it hits a point on this displacement map. And even though this is ray tracing, this isn't a ray traced renderer. This is very important to understand. It is still a real time renderer, Fusion's real time renderer. It just uses ray tracing to create this depth effect. So I want to show you guys something which is very important to understand before you start using AccuShader. So if I position the camera like this at a nice angle, something like that, and I add a camera to the scene. So if you drag the camera to the viewport, it will take on the view of the viewport. And now I'm going to add a render node. So this is what it looks like without lighting enabled. And if I enable lighting, you'll see that none of the effects are here. We have bump, we don't have reflections, we don't have anything going on here. And the reason is that we are rendering with the software render. But if I enable the OpenGL render, you will see that we have our environment, we have our stones, we have our displacement, everything looks great. Because most of the features of AccuShader, like the soft reflections, and the displacement 
and the clear code and the transmission, all of these settings only work with the OpenGL render because these effects are very hard to calculate for a CPU. The OpenGL render, however, uses your GPU to calculate these effects. This would be almost impossible to calculate all of this on your CPU. That's why it doesn't work with the software render, it only works with the OpenGL render. But as you can see, the effects look really good. I would believe that this is an actual displacement because it looks like it. This effect does, however, have limits. This displacement effect, if you zoom in like really tight, you'll be able to see that it's flat. There, you can see it's flat if you're like at a very sharp angle. And it doesn't work very well on geometry that has like lots of curves and bumps. For that, you want to use actual displacement, like the displace node. But this is, uh, this is a great way to add displacement without having to add subdivisions. And as you can see, it's very responsive. And I actually, what I want to do right now is I want to, I want to go to the 3D options and disable the grid. And the reason is because I'm doing screen capture right now and the grid just messes it up. It creates these like artifacts on the, on the screen capture for the video. So we have our plane here, we have our reflections. And the important thing is that if I edit this environment map here, if I bring down the gain, you'll see that it'll look like as if these bricks are in a nighttime scene. So watch this. I'm gonna add a brightness contrast. And I'm going to bring down the gain. And this is starting to look as if you have like a, a lamp post here that's shining on the bricks and it's nighttime right now. So if you look at our environment map, you can see it became a lot, it became darker. I just want it to be like that, something like that. And if I look at the shader now, you'll see how that looks. Just bring the game down a bit. Yeah. So since it's an HDR map, you can bring down the gain and it just makes it look like the scene is darker. So there are a whole bunch of things you can do. If you change the environment, you'll have a completely different look. The ambient lighting will look completely different. And you can customize the look however you want. And that's just about it for the brick texture. So let's move on and start looking at the metallic workflow. So the metallic workflow is one of the most powerful features of using PBR. It allows you to have a metalness map that shows what parts of the material are metal and what parts are not. This is more advanced than the old specular workflow that you see with Fusion's tools like the Cook Torrents. Specular workflow is nice, it works, but it does take more work to get the material to look how you want it to. So I'm just going to get rid of that Cook Torrents right now. And I'm just going to get rid of all of this actually and show you how to put together a metallic material with AccuShader. So here are the textures I got from Polygon. This is a free material and I'll put a link to this one in the description. You do have to create an account though to get these textures, but they are very high quality. So I'm going to drag out the albedo, the metallic, the normal and the roughness. Actually it's the roughness and then the normal. Now I'm going to add another AccuShader node. I'm going to view the AccuShader node in the viewer and I'm going to pipe in the albedo into the base color, the metallic into the metallic, the roughness into the roughness, and for the normal, I'm going to add a bump map again and set the type to bump and plug that into our bump map. As you can see, this one didn't come with a displacement map because there are only very small bumps on the surface and there are no like large details here. So there's still something wrong here. This doesn't look like a metallic material. It looks more like a sort of a shiny, dirty concrete. And the reason is that the, even though AccuShader uses a metallic workflow by default, it doesn't have it enabled just like all of the other PBR tools you see in other software like Blender. All I have to do to enable the metallic workflow is bring this metallic slider to one. But there's still a problem. We don't see our environment here. We see a world that is completely gray and that's because we didn't add an environment map yet. So I'm going to go to AccuShader, Browse Environments and I'm going to choose the one I had earlier. I'm going to pipe this into the environment map input 
And as you can see, the gamut is correct because this one, this environment map is already sRGB. So here's our material. I like the way it looks, but I want to customize it a little bit. I want the metal to be a little bit rougher. So how do I do that? I do that by playing with the roughness map. As you can see, most parts of the roughness map are very dark, closer to black. This is below 0 0.5. And if I remap this to a lighter gray and leave the white point where it is, then I'll have a blurrier metal, a uh, rougher metal. So I do that with a color map. This is a tool that comes with AccuShader. You can find it in the AccuShader toolbox. These are some additional tools that come with AccuShader that allow you to create your own materials. Here we have the principal shader, which is AccuShader. We have a noise pattern, a brick pattern, a herringbone pattern, a checker plate pattern, a gradient map, color map, directional warp, slope, and polygon. And these are tools that you can use to create your own materials, like the kind of materials you create in a 3D material application like Substance or Blender. So I'm just going to close this and we'll take a look at this later when we're creating our tile material here. So I want to remap the black to a light gray. So this is the black, in the color map. So I'm just going to bring it up and I want to view the material at the same time. If I bring the black back down, you can see we have a nice glossy material. If I bring it up, we get a rough metal and play with this until you get the look that you like. So this is our metal material. I am very pleased with how this works. As you can see, the reflections become blurrier without creating seams or distortion. I'm just going to show you this with a separate AccuShader node. If I just pipe in the environment and nothing else, and I change it to metallic, you can see that there are no seams and no distortion. You can make the reflection completely shiny and you can make it very blurry like this and you will not see seams. This is because of a technique called stochastic multi-sampling. It was taught to me by Chad Kaplan, a good friend of mine. Thank you, Chad, for teaching me this technique. It is very useful in 3D applications. It does look a little bit noisy, but this actually gets filtered out with the renderer. And if it doesn't filter out and you still see a little bit of the noise, you can always just increase the number of samples until you get a nice look. So I'm just going to bring that back to where it was, get rid of this accusator, and let's get back to our metallic material. So this looks very nice. It looks pretty good mapped on a sphere. I just want to see what this looks like on a model. So I'm going to search for ball. This is the shader ball that comes with Kika shaders. This is a package from Reactor. Kika shaders made by Andrew Hazelden and Aurora the Blue. This is a very nice pack with shaders made by the community. Very nice shaders. And this is the model that they use to test the shaders on. So I'm just borrowing this to show you what that looks like. So it looks very nice mapped onto this shape. And this is with lighting disabled. This is just environment lighting. If I turn on the lighting, you'll see we get a little bit of extra specular. That's basically what metal is. It's pure reflections with specular. There is no diffuse going on in metal. So if I render this, you will see again that we have a very simple looking shape, no reflections going on. But if I enable the OpenGL renderer, we will have our reflection mapping. So of course you can turn the lighting off or on. But as you can see, when you turn on high quality, the noise goes away. We still see the noise in the viewport. Over here, we do see quite a bit of noise going on. But in 3D renderer, it gets filtered out because the high quality enables um, some sort of filtering. I believe it's called bilinear filtering. And this looks very nice. So that's basically it for the metallic workflow and the regular workflow using roughness. But now I want to show you guys how you can create your own material using AccuShader. So here is a nice kitchen tile that I made earlier and we're going to be making this from scratch now. So I'm just gonna 
go backspace and I'm going to go to AccuShader new project and I'm going to call this kitchen tile and for the resolution I want it to be 1024 by 1024 and I'm going to click on create and for the workflow I want it to be roughness metallic and I'm gonna click on create and I want to choose an indoors environment because it's um, it's tile so I want it to be indoors and now we have our workflow here so I'm just gonna right click go to show tile pictures I'm gonna turn that off so we have the base color here here we have metallic roughness normal and the environment that we chose this one I believe is in sRGB just with too much contrast so I'm going to get rid of this base color and metallic and I'm going to set the metal to zero. The roughness map I can get rid of and then this normal map. So I just have these two left. And now I want to create the tile. So I'm going to go to AccuShader toolbox and we're going to be using a tool from here. So I want to use the brick pattern. And that's about it. We don't need anything else from the toolbox. We have a whole bunch of tools here that you can use to create your own uh, materials. But if you guys are interested, I can make another tutorial where you, where we go over material creation using AccuShader. It can be a pretty long video to create some nice materials. But right now, I just want to create a very simple one just so you see how it works. So here we have Bricks Generator. And this makes it very easy to create like a brick-like pattern. So I want to bring the header spacing to zero and I want to bring the brick width to two and the gradient I want to bring very low like that. So I want to zoom in so you don't see that much of the gradient. You just see a little bit. That's where the grout is going to be. So if I look at our AccuShader now, I can pipe this into the base color and we have a very simple looking pattern here. And of course, I want this also to go into the image input of the bump map. And I'm going to change it to a height map and bring the height up to about 5. And also, we need to bring down the roughness. But I'm going to do this with a roughness map in just a second. So this looks pretty fine. But I want to have the grout a little bit groutier, a little bit noisy here. I want it to look like rough. So the way to do that is I'm just going to take this shift, pull it away so we can look at that. And I'm going to take a background, make it black. And I'm going to take a second background, control C, control V. And I'm going to make this one white. So to the black one, I'm going to add some grain. If you look closely, you'll be able to see it. I'm going to bring the power up and bring the size down and as you can see if I click play we have this animation going on and we don't want that of course you could use film grain but I found that film grain is a bit slower than the grain node so I'm just going to add a time stretcher and just double click on the source time so it doesn't animate and if I view this you'll see that it doesn't animate anymore so now I'm just going to merge these two together, view the merge, control T actually, and I'm going to use this bricks generator as a mask. So I'm going to add a bitmap tool, pipe that into the bitmap and view it. So it's completely white now and that's because we're using the alpha channel and the alpha channel is white. So I'm going to change this to luminance and now we have our mask. And I'm going to pipe this into the merge node. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Move it around. Now if I view this, you can hardly see a difference. But now there's a little bit of bumpiness going on here in the edges. And now I'm going to pipe this into the base color and pipe it into the bump map. So if I view this now, you'll see that we have a little bit of noise going on in the crevices here where the grout is supposed to be. Now I also want to use a roughness map so that in the middle it's rough but these actual these plates are shiny. 
So I'm going to get a brightness contrast. Or even better, actually, I'm going to use a color map. So I'm going to bring the toolbox back again. And I need the color map. And I'm going to pipe this output into the color map. And I want to change it. I want the black to be white and the white to be black. And instead of pure black, I wanted to make just like a gray, a mid gray like this, maybe with the value of 0.5. It's going to be our roughness map. So whatever's in the grout is going to be fully rough and whatever is the tile is going to be half roughness. So I'm going to pipe this into the roughness map. And now it looks more like tile. That looks very nice. And that is how you create a very simple material using AccuShader. And these materials are PBR. It's very simple, not like the kinds that you use, like the kinds that you make in Substance. But if you want to make a material like in Substance, then please let me know. I can make another tutorial if there is enough demand. I'm not sure how many people would want to make materials in Fusion, but it is definitely possible, especially with the toolbox and with AccuShader. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. AccuShader is available now on our website, and I'll put the link to that in the description below, as well as the links to the textures used in this video and the place where you can get more cool environment maps. If you have any questions, please reach out to me via email. I'll put the link to my email address in the description below. And until next time, I'm David Cohen, and this is Learn Now FX.